Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to our channel Talk Arabic Today, where I teach you how to speak Arabic like a native using real materials. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a short clip talking about the war between Gaza and Israel, specifically the speech of Abu Abayda where he revealed a strange thing. Let's see the video together then. I will explain it for you word by word. أما عدونا الذي يصب جام غضبه على أهلنا الأبرياء وعلى المباني المدنية والمساجد والمشافي فإنه لن يحقق سوى الخزي والعار وستبقى غزة وسيندحر ويكفي أن نقول للعالم اليوم بأن أحذية بعض مساجد وكنائس غزة أقدم من عمر دويلة هذا العدو بقرون وأن أشجار الزيتون في غزة مزروعة قبل أن يولد آباء وأجداد هؤلاء الشراذم القادمين من أوروبا الشرقية والغربية ومن كافة أصقاع الأرض. Before we continue, I want you to memorize these nouns. The first noun, المبنى, is the building. The plural, المباني, the buildings. Next, we have الدويلة. To understand the meaning of دويلة, let me first walk you through the concept of a diminutive or التصغير in Arabic. A diminutive or التصغير is a word created by altering a root word to express a lesser degree of its origin meaning. For example, دويلة is a diminutive of the word دولة. دولة is a state or a country. So دويلة illustrates a small meaning of a state. In other words, it's a small, tiny little state. All right. Another example, Nahr, which is a river, Nuhair, a small little river. Next, we have the phrase Jamma Ghadabi. It means a cup of his anger or a vessel of his rage. It is often used to describe someone who is extremely angry or furious. The term Jamma means a cup or a vessel. And غضبي, of course, it means his anger or his rage. So when we say جامع غضبي, we are figuratively referring to someone who is so angry that it's as if their anger is contained in a cup or in a vessel, emphasizing the intensity of their emotional state. Next, we have الشرذمة, the plural الشرذم. It is used to describe a group of people considered socially undesirable. This term often carries out a negative concept, and it is important to be cautious when using it as it may contribute to negative reactions. Final word we have saqa and the plural asqa. Asqa means corners, regions, or territories. When we say asqa, al it means all over the world or all the regions of the world. Now let's move to verbs, examples, and some grammar rules. First verb, yasubbu, yasubbu. We use it with the pronoun huwa. We say huwa yasubbu. And it means he pours. So yasubbu conveys the action of pouring whether it's pouring water into a glass or rain pouring from the sky. For example, Omar يَصُبُّ الْمَاءَ ببط فِي الكوب. Another example, عَدُوُّنَا يَصُبُّ جَامَّ غَضَبِهِ Remember this, جَامَّ غَضَبِهِ عَلَى أَهْلِنَا الْأَبْرِيَا Next, we have the verb يَنْدَحِر يَنْدَحِر We use it with the pronoun هو We say it means he withers or he fades away. It is often used to describe something losing its strength, leading to a state of decline or deterioration. Example, Another example, Final verb, Mazru'a, we say, hiya mazru'a. Mazru'a is the passive form of the verb zara, which means to plant or to cultivate. So, mazru'a means 
were planted or were cultivated. Example, الحقل مزروع بالقمح. Another example, أشجار الزيتون في غزة مزروعة قبل أن يولد آباء وأجداد الإسرائيليين. All right, time to recap. We are going to use all the nouns, the verbs, the examples that we have seen in order to understand the entire clip. أما عدونا الذي يصب جام غضبه على أهلنا الأبرياء وعلى المباني المدنية والمساجد والمشافي فإنه لن يحقق سوى الخزي والعار وستبقى غزة وسيندحر ويكفي أن نقول للعالم اليوم بأن أحذية بعض مساجد وكنائس غزة أقدم من عمر دويلة هذا العدو بقرون وأن أشجار الزيتون في غزة مزروعة قبل أن يولد آباء وأجداد هؤلاء الشراذم القادمين من أوروبا الشرقية والغربية ومن كافة أسقاع الأرض That's it. It was easy, wasn't it? Well, if you have any question or concern or you need clarification with any word, please write me your comments in the comment section below and I will be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.